I have never been murdered, so I completely lack experience in this area. But some people have been murdered, and they say it's a stressful experience, especially if those people are notoriously hard to kill. This is a list of 10 people who just wouldn't die. Edward Teach was the angry English pirate known internationally as Blackbeard. Blackbeard was hated in many countries and on all seven seas, but it was the governor of Virginia who ordered his assassination. Blackbeard was anchored at an island with his crew when he noticed two approaching ships, and in good time the pirates boarded their own ship and sailed out towards the others. They turned their cannons to the assassins and started blasting them with what I can only describe as a Donkey Kong load of cast iron. After one third of the assassins were killed and one of the ships was destroyed, Blackbeard and co decided to board the other. When they boarded the ship they were shocked by the number of men who emerged from below deck. Blackbeard found himself surrounded. The captain of the ship broke his sword stabbing him. He was then slashed in the neck which didn't slow him. He kept fighting until his last breath. He had been stabbed 20 times and shot 5. He was so hard to kill that they cut off his head just to make sure he was dead. Joseph Tito was the president of Yugoslavia. He was the man Stalin couldn't assassinate, standing strong and healthy after 22 attempts. In fact, some historians claim that Tito even had Stalin poisoned. When Joseph Stalin died, a letter from Tito was found in his office. The letter read, Stop sending people to kill me. We've already captured five of them, one with a bomb and another with a rifle. If you don't stop sending killers, I'll send one to Moscow and I won't have to send another. It reminds me of what the IRA said after they failed to assassinate British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. In a statement, they wrote, Today we were unlucky, but remember, we only have to be lucky once. Leon Trotsky founded and led the Soviet Red Army, and as it happens, he was also an enemy of Stalin, which is nothing special. It has been well documented that Stalin was a bit of a dick. In 1927, Trotsky was expelled from the Communist Party and exiled from Russia two years later. He eventually fled to Mexico. On the 20th of August 1940, an assassin entered Trotsky's home. The assassin struck him in the back of the head with an ice axe. This seemed to do little more than anger Trotsky. He attacked the assassin, wrestling him to the ground. With an axe still lodged in his brain, Trotsky was able to hold down the assassin until his bodyguards realized what was happening. Which is just embarrassing for the assassin, especially considering Trotsky was 60 years old. Due to blood loss, Trotsky died one day later. With the magical combo of being both a slave trader and a folk hero, Jim Bowie was world famous. He was so tough the Bowie knife was named after him. In 1827, Bowie attended a duel between two others. During the duel, Bowie was accidentally shot in the hip. As a reaction to this, Bowie drew his knife and charged the man. The man struck Bowie in his face, sending him to the ground. While he was on the ground, another man shot him and stabbed him in the chest, but that didn't finish him. He stabbed the man right back, killing him instantly. Bowie jumped to his feet, where he was shot and stabbed again. While still under fire, he pulled the sword from his chest and charged the two remaining men. At this point, I would have assumed him to be some kind of immortal being, which might explain why the two men actually ran away from him. Bowie lived another nine years. Pablo Escobar was Colombia's most notorious drug lord. He was known as the King of Cocaine, with an estimated net worth of $30 billion. Just like everyone else on this list, Escobar had a lot of enemies, partly because he regularly arranged the assassinations of judges and police officers. In 1993, a task force of American soldiers and Colombian police officers joined a large group of the families of Escobar's victims with the aim of killing Escobar. Long story short, they found him, and immediately started firing their weapons at him in a shootout that almost exhausted South America's bullet supplies. 
Pablo Escobar was chased across rooftops. After getting shot quite a lot of times, he shot himself for the head. He always told those close to him he would shoot himself for the ears rather than be captured. Ferdinand Magellan was the Portuguese explorer who discovered the Philippines. Magellan entered into a contract with a Filipino king where he agreed to kill Lapu Lapu, king of the Matkan Islands. In 1521, he brought his crew to the island, along with 250 native warriors, but they were met with disaster as Lapu was waiting for him, with a 1,500-strong army. As soon as the battle began, Magellan was shot with a poisoned dart. He was then stabbed in the face with a bamboo spear. As he drew his sword, he was slashed several times, sending him falling to the ground. Even with him being repeatedly stabbed and bludgeoned by a large group of natives, it still took several minutes to kill him. According to local legend, Lapu Lapu transformed into a statue after the battle, where he remains today. Gabriel Garcia Moreno was the president of Ecuador between 1861 until his death in 1875. Garcia was hated by liberals, as he was basically a military dictator, so it was only a matter of time until someone ordered the hit. On August the 6th, he walked out of a Catholic cathedral to be met by a group of assassins. By use of machetes, they cut deep into his head. They cut off his left arm and right hand, but this wasn't even enough to send him to the ground. For that, they would have to shoot him six times. Before he lost his life, he was able to write the words God does not die in his own blood, which is literally bloody terrifying. Ned Kelly was the most famous Australian outlaw of the 19th century. His first run-in with the law was when he stole a pig from a Chinese man named Ah Fook. I must admit when I first read that, I thought it was a joke, but it's just the truth. He stole a pig from Ah Fook. But fast forward 11 years and Ned Kelly is a serious criminal. In June 1880, while two trains full of police are steaming to arrest him, Kelly and his gang rounded up 62 hostages inside an inn. When the police surrounded the inn, Kelly emerged from the doorway wearing bulletproof armor. As the armor protected Kelly from the assault and the police began to panic, he took a shotgun clap to the legs, which was the only area not covered by his armor. Falling to the ground, he was soon captured and eventually hanged by the neck until dead. Fidel Castro was the socialist dictator of Cuba from the revolution up until 2008. The fact that he is still alive is a miracle, seeing as there have been 638 attempts to assassinate him. Many of these were by the CIA. They include an attempt to replace his cigars with a box of exploding ones. The closest they came to killing him was by use of a poisoned milkshake, and Castro's radio announcement booth was once rigged with poisoned gas. He is currently in his late 80s. Rasputin was a Russian faith healer who managed to become a close friend of the Tsar. Rasputin had a lot of enemies, as people blamed him for Russia's involvement in the First World War. So in 1916, it was decided that he had to die. A group of noblemen invited him into a basement and treated him to poison-laced cake and wine. Rasputin ate a lot of cake and drank a lot of wine, but the poison didn't seem to affect him at all. After a while, they began to wonder why he wasn't dead yet. They soon realized that he was just having a good time, so they shot him in the back with a handgun. As Rasputin looked dead, they left the palace. But when one of the men returned to the basement to fetch his coat, Rasputin got back on his feet and started strangling him. They shot Rasputin another three times, and when that didn't work, started beating him. And when that didn't work, tied him up and threw him into a river. As he fell through the ice, he was still alive and tried to free himself before finally drowning. And so that brings us to the end of the list on 10 people who just wouldn't die. 
These videos take a lot of time to produce, so I really appreciate every like, comment, share, and new subscriber as it really helps them reach more people.